and standing next to a talent, as you can see. So we're here at Car Corral, came over to Illinois. We had a trip to make, so we figured to swing by and take a look at this one, show you guys what we thought of this thing straight away. Um, I have to say, first things first, it looks better than the pictures show it off. So. like Chad, it looks it, better in person. No, it does. Chad doesn't look better in person. <laughs> Chad looks worse in person. So, Doug's gonna give you guys a walk around. We're gonna kinda talk about some of the stuff that we know, and then we're gonna get to take a drive in it here. Excuse the traffic noise, it's how it is. So, some of the first thing we noticed, the tie rods, they're nice and beefy. I do like to see that. They look a little bit beefier even than the Razor tie rods, which is good. Um, the A-arms, upper and lower on the front are pretty good. Nice thick metal, it seems like. I don't think you're gonna have any major problems. They even have built-in gussets in them. One of the shortcomings that I do see is on the front, the brake line where the banjo bolt actually sits proud of the wheel a little bit, and it's rubber brake lines going directly down into the caliper there. So that could need addressed, just we'll put it that way. Um, it does seem like it wants to uh, maybe catch on a tree branch or something. Yeah. So uh, that's something that needs looking out for, in my opinion. Uh, we'll go around the back first, and we'll get to the interior next. The cage is ROPS approved. It is a two inch cage, which is odd in this market because everything else is inch and three quarters. Although it does seem to be just as thin a material as all the others do. So in my opinion, if you're gonna race it, or if you're gonna do any heavy riding, you probably upgrade the cage. But that's for any machine. That's nothing against the Honda Talon itself. Uh, moving to the back, it does have this, what do they call it, a virtual fifth link or whatever it is where it's got the extra bar that comes up and goes over instead of doing all just trailing arms. I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, I haven't seen or ridden it yet. We've just gotten to look at it so far. Um, if Doug will shoot up there to the front of that trailing arm, you'll notice that there's a cast piece in there. It's a joint that does the pivoting. I can see where that would help smooth it out but I'm just not real sure about it. I mean, it's just different. I'm not saying it's bad. I just don't know enough about it to know if it's good or bad. It's definitely an interesting design. And, you know, take if you look at the rest of the suspension as a whole, it seems like if that breaks, you're going to have a lot of other broken stuff as well. But, and there's there's been a lot of discussion about this guy right here. Um, this uh, ball joint here is what Doug's talking about. And... I do question that. It hangs out a fair amount. Um, there's going to be a lot of pressure on that. That's where your shock mounts and everything. Um, I think that's going to be a failure point over the years. Uh, the trailing arm, the control arms, they're thin just like Polaris's. They're going to bend. Aftermarket's going to come up with a better solution than that, I am sure. Uh, yeah. The rear brake line's routed a little better. It's steel up to this point and then rubber here on out. I would still like to see at least steel to braided steel lines, um, but that's not the end of the world. The bed's pretty small, but then again, we aren't using these to tow anything. I would like to see, maybe Honda even has it in aftermarket or at least factory offered gate. Um, the air box. This looks like, and I don't see it on this one, but uh, maybe there's a the pro, tie down, a pro net, or something that yeah. comes with it. I'm not sure. The air box is huge. I believe this is the oil check and fill right here, so they have good access to their stuff. It's Honda. The fit and finish on this machine overall is exactly what you would expect from a Honda. It is very, very, very good. good. Yeah. Um, let me put this back so I don't not put it back when I drive off. So looking at the inside, I'm not a huge fan of the nets. The nets would have to go if it was mine. Um, I'm gonna climb in. The, the cabin, the doors close nicely. They have a nice handle inside. Um, this is all stuff you've probably seen. The gauge cluster, sub-optimal, I guess is the best way to put that. Uh, it's. I've seen other pictures of it. It's not easy to see. It's not big enough in my opinion. Um, whatever. The button layout, I'm good with. The only thing I don't like about it is the same thing that I thought when I saw the pictures initially. 
the buttons are not your standard size for rocker switches so um, if you put any aftermarket in they will never match these but they're easier to get to with a they gloved are. hand with a gloved hand I mean there's yeah. you, I can fit two fingers wide in each and that automatic to manual sport mode that's your hill hold or hill whatever they call it um, and then four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive so paddle shifter it's a paddle shifter we'll see I wish they had brought them down a little more maybe even attached them to the wheel so when you turned you could still shift easy enough but that's what I was curious about to drive it and see how I felt about the paddle shifter when I turn the wheel and it leaves my hand but standard kind of shift pattern of what you would expect same as a Polaris it's park reverse neutral they have high and low switch versus what a Polaris is uh, the razor high is all the way back and low is in this position but on these it's high here and low is all the way back I don't see that as being a problem it's just different everyone rants and raves about the uh, pull out bar which it works really well it's Honda's thought it out Honda knows what they're doing they're not stupid uh, the glove box is what you'd expect I'd say it's slightly better than even my razors glove box because the razors glove box is kind of down and below and a little bit harder to see into and get into it looks like it seals up pretty decent yeah it's got a nice uh, recessed well all the way around plus some nice weather strip there but uh, yeah cup holders are there and seat belts the seats are I don't know I'm sitting at an angle down right now because it's still parked up as a display show thing um, they feel pretty comfortable the bases are a little on the flat side as far as flat this way um, and they almost look a little flat pointed down but like I said I'm sitting up at an angle down on the nose so we'll see how that goes once I get it down and once we drive it around I do like in the footwell of the passenger side they did the same thing that the X3's have done where there is a foothold basically for the left and right foot so that the passenger can kind of brace and push back against the footwells instead of just having one if you've ever been a passenger with Chad you'll you, know how you want dual footwell you holes. know how important that is yeah and they give you a little more space where you can stretch out between them um, on the driver's side the foot area my left foot feels a little cramped the seats all the way back right now um, but like distance to the firewall is a long distance I wish there was a little bit more room there to extend my left foot out but it's really no different than my razor as far as uh, tightness or crampness so nothing against it it's just if I was building my perfect machine from the ground up it would be slightly different I think, uh, I think for you and if I, and I have five foot ten from sitting in that seat it's pretty comfortable for the average size guy I think if you're a big six foot three six foot four guy yeah uh, might be a little tight but overall not bad steering wheel adjustability kind of the same system as a razor with a shock with a detent that you pull and it goes up and down these all come with a roof I mean it's a plastic roof you know it'll keep the water and the weather off of you that's kind of what they're meant to do so you know 12 volt outlet and that's kind of the typical standard stuff no real complaints about anything so far uh, some things I don't know we're gonna get out and take it for a spin show you guys what uh, that looks like here in a second
manual, it still kicked it down into first. Watch the mud. <laughs> Nice, if, honestly. If they had a push pull so that you could shift when the wheels are turned a little bit more, or if they extended them down another couple inches. Oh, yeah. Or if they mounted to the wheel themselves. Because when your wheel is turned, you are not shifting if you're in manual mode. But when you put this through some fairly jarring bumps, it lets you feel them. I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's uh, a bad suspension or anything. It's definitely just very firm. Yeah. Of course, now we do have this set right now on three. All the shocks were set, which I believe is the firmest setting. Yeah, that's where the dealership had it, and we aren't here to mess with their stuff too much. So, backing that down some would probably change that a little bit, the, the dynamics of that. But, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just, you know, it's very firm, and it, it everything in here feels tight and well put together, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Like, nothing rattles, nothing squeaks. It's exactly what you'd expect out of a brand new Honda. Not bad. Not bad. I wish we had a bigger space to to really put it through its paces, but I'm glad to just even get to be able to sit in one. And yep. the seats are definitely better now that we're not. Yes, when you're not nose forward. down. Because <laughs> we were on one of these kind of ramp type of deals like this, so you felt like you're going to fall forward. Yeah. But yeah, these are not bad. And honestly, once you got some good five harnesses. point harnesses in here, I don't feel like I would move around enough. It would concern me. And the seats do have pockets where the harnesses would come through back behind you. So. Yep, you got bars right back here. I mean, it's all it's, it's all set up. It's provisioned for harnesses. In fact, there's a lot of things you can tell they've done already that they're kind of getting ready for the aftermarket or for stuff they want to sell, and that's that's nice to see that there's some of that thought there. Yeah. I think the only thing that would probably put off a few people, there's not, like you said, these switches are big. You're not going to be able to match them, but even if you use standard size ones, there's not a whole... I guess you could do something here. 
maybe uh, put a couple across the crown, but there's not a whole lot of space if you're going to add 15 light bars and have 20 different switches. Yeah. You're going to have to get a little creative. You eat up the space you have. Yep. So. Cool. All right. When are you buying me one? When are you buying me one? This is going to be a while. Okay. <laughs> Car Corral was nice enough to let us go drive their town. And look, and what, look what we have done. Doug made it dirty. I Yeah, I might have got a little rambunctious. It's hard to put somebody on a side-by-side -side and be like, now keep it clean. But man, they got a beautiful location here. Yeah, it is. Next time you buy me something, Chad, you should come here. I should come here to buy you something. You totally should. Loud trucks. Complete with semis. With Loud exhaust. So, kind of a wrap up on what we're thinking on this. You all know me, I'm gonna be brutally honest. The power isn't there. Um, it is, it's underwhelming, mediocre. It'll be a fine trail machine. Uh, what's it gonna be for a race machine? I don't think it'll keep up with the others. The suspension's pretty stiff. Maybe that can be adjusted out of it. If they can get some more power out of it, it'd be a great machine. Um, I don't know, the seats are better, like we were saying earlier. In the GoPro footage, the seats are much better than I thought. Once you get it down on level ground, the seats are pretty good. Um, mud protection was fine. I didn't get dirty, so that's good. <laughs> uh, even though Doug tried to get me dirty. It's it's a full test, man. It is. You got to make sure. Uh, overall, I think it's a great competitor in the 1000 market for your normal trail riding guy. It's going to be dead reliable like any Honda would. The fit and finish on it is great. Um, you know, you put a tailgate cover on here, or some sort of tailgate, and some lower one-third doors. Uh, you'd have a great machine to go take out in the trail, go all day long, uh, get good mileage, and I'm sure it'll last a long time. And it's a Honda, you'll probably have great resale value on it too. So that's kind of what I've got on it. Doug, anything to add? Yeah, pretty much the same thoughts. Like I said, I'd, I'd like to have some time to adjust the suspension. Like I said, from from the uh, dealership here, you can see the setting it's at, it's on three. So, but it did seem very firm and again, not in a horrible like bone jarring way, but also feels like it's just gonna wanna chatter and, and move around a bit. And that's kind of what it was during on the dirt road there. Um, it is very comfortable. Like I'm actually very surprised how much I like the cabin space in it. The interior is solid, I, like, I really like the seats. I really like the control layout, where everything is. I do wish the display was bigger and or tilted more towards the driver because it's a little hard to see. Um, overall, it's a great 1000. The power is, it, it comes on smooth. It's a 1000, so if you're looking for something that's gonna accelerate like a turbo, obviously this is not gonna be the machine for you, but it's, I'm kind of in the same boat as Chad. It's not it's not a super exciting machine. If you're looking to just jump in and mash the throttle and be wild, this is probably not the machine for you. Um, down the road, there may be a, a turbo option for this, and that's going to change the game a little bit. But again, the high points, man, the fit and finish are just fantastic. And I think if you throw a few accessories on this, you can go riding all weekend and not be disappointed at all. I just don't know how it translates into a race machine yet. We're going to have to see. Uh, it's going to be a tough sell if you're racing and you know you're going to beat a machine up. That to uh, know that you're paying twenty thousand for this, and for about fourteen thousand or so, you could be into a Razor one thousand and have a machine that's equally as capable. But you know, you're spending a lot less money up front, so you're not going to beat it up as bad. And you're, well, when you do beat it up, you won't feel as bad. Same thing. You can get into an X3, the non-turbo, for a little less money. Um, but, you know, first year or two, so I like it. Overall, I like it. I just don't know that it's my cup of tea specifically if I was going to go buy something.